North America's vast Great Lakes are a magnificent resource. They hold 21% of the world's surface fresh water and are so big they're visible from the moon. The Great Lakes are a robust ecosystem. They provide drinking water for millions of people and are the foundation for billions of dollars in trade, shipping, tourism, recreation and other sectors in Canada. Over time, Lakes Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie and Ontario have faced significant challenges. In the 60s, uh, parts of Hamilton Harbour behind me here were so coated in oil that it could have caught fire. But actually in 1969, the Cuyahoga River flowing through Cleveland, Ohio on its way to, the, to Lake Erie was so polluted that it did actually catch fire. During the following decade, we saw cormorants born with deformed beaks, eggshell thinning and bald eagles, and disfiguring tumors in fish. The resulting animal population crashes were caused by contamination from chemicals such as PCBs, DDT, dioxins and furans. We've come a long way since those days, with many major improvements. Still, many challenges remain. Nearshore areas are under stress from human activities. Millions of Canadians and Americans live, work and play close to the shorelines of the Great Lakes. However, in many of these areas, water quality and ecosystem health is impaired due to the presence of excess algae, bacteria, invasive species, and physical alterations of the shoreline. Lakes need to maintain balanced levels of nutrients to stay healthy. Too much or too little can cause problems. Excess algal growths form mats of floating or attached algae. They contribute to poor water quality, destroy fish and wildlife habitat, add costs to treat drinking water, even create beach closures. Wetlands help remove nutrients that enter lakes through agricultural runoff and urban sources. However, agricultural and urban development is increasing and threatening the very wetlands that are helping us to deal with this problem. There is also growing evidence that some non-native plants and animals can cause great harm when introduced into the Great Lakes. Aquatic invasive species are introduced in ships' ballast water, on pleasure boats, by release of live bait, and even plants and animals from aquariums. They can enter the system through other waterways and overland during natural events such as flooding. Some of the aquatic invasive species present today include sea lamprey, zebra mussels, and round goby, Invasive plant species include Phragmites and purple loosestrife. Once invasive species reach the Great Lakes, they cost millions of dollars to control, so the best way to deal with them is to prevent them from entering our lakes in the first place. Environment Canada coordinates and undertakes many science activities in the Great Lakes. We work with many levels of government, including the United States, the province of Ontario, and other federal, regional, and municipal groups. With them, we deliver the science and actions needed to address the environmental stresses that are affecting the lakes. Together, we're not only taking action to clean up the problems of the past and dealing with the challenges of today, but we're also working to anticipate and prevent the problems and challenges of tomorrow. The Great Lakes are a shared responsibility. Governments can't protect and restore them alone. This important resource is used by Canadians and needs to be protected by Canadians. That means making positive changes to the way we all use the lakes. By protecting the Great Lakes waters today, Canadians can ensure that one of nature's most important gifts will be available for the generations of tomorrow. By acting together, we can keep the Great Lakes great.